Hello and welcome back to the second video about my little scroll that I have here. And today I'd like to share two more stitches with you. Well, actually two sides of the same stitch and show you how I made a lot of the stems and the tree trunks and a lot of the texture in this piece. And let's get started, shall we? And I'm going to start out the same way that I did when we were doing running stitch that I showed you in the last video. I'm just going to take one stitch in and out and I'm going to pull that up to the front of the cloth and now if we were doing running stitch we would just continue sewing another thread in the same direction in the same way that we did but this time to create back stitch instead of continuing upwards we're actually going to stitch backwards to fill in that blank spot that we would have if we were doing running stitch. So I'm going into the cloth back where the previous stitch ended and then I'm going to come out forward. So I'm going to go into the back and then come out past the previous spot where the thread had come out. So as you can see that creates a solid line all in one go. I don't have to go back and whip around those stitches like we did when we were doing running stitch. And I can move my thread whenever I want. I'll just take a big stitch across the back and I'll move my thread wherever I want to start creating some branches. And I'm doing the same thing. One stitch then back and I'll move, move over to to another new spot and start another branch and I'll take one stitch in and out on this last one I've decided that that's enough for that branch and I'm just going to secure the threads on the back by taking a few stitches over the same spot and securing my thread and one thing you'll notice here on the back is that back stitch does not look the same on the front as it does on the back and I'll show you how we can take advantage of that in, a, in just a minute. But first of all, I'm going to do another stem off back stitch. Do a little bit of troubleshooting here. Let's see, this time instead of stitching forwards, I'm going to take that first stitch back, which is probably a little bit more formal way of doing back stitch than starting out with that first running stitch. So always on the top you take a stitch back and then forward coming out ahead of your thread and you'll notice I'm going to do this intentionally but sometimes this happens accidentally it might happen to you occasionally sometimes as I'm stitching forwards I don't quite get my needle all the way back to the previous stitch and I end up with some gaps in my in my row of stitches and they look sort of like sort of the way that the running stitch looks so what I can do with that to fill those gaps in is just like we whipped running stitch we can also whip our back stitch which will then again fill in all the lines I use this whipped back stitch often when I'm making embroidered letters or words and I'm not going to use any in this particular project but I'm sort of planning to do some other another series of videos that show you many different ways of using some of the stitches and if that comes to be it's still sort of a, an idea in my head I will definitely show you how I create words with stitch. Now that I've done those two back stitch stems I'm going to show you how to do a stem stitch stem finally the other side of the back stitch. So I'm going to bring my thread up to the front from the back to the front and then I'm going to take a bit of a long stitch. So one stitch forward and I'm going to go come back up halfway back along that stitch. So I'm going to take a longish stitch and then halfway back. And that creates what's called a stem stitch. So you stitch forward and then come back. So it's the opposite off the back stitch. It might take a little bit of getting used to and now in very strict sort of stem stitch you'll always come up on the same side of your stitching line but if you're trying to create an organic look you can bounce back and forth you can come up on one side at one time and then on the other side it doesn't really matter it 
creates a, a more random textured look. And just like we did with the back stitch, we can stop and then get started, move our needle to another spot, and then create branches on our stem here. So practice that one. This creates a thicker stem than the back stitch alone. And it's also a really good stitch for creating textured branches, like a very bark-like texture of branches. So I'm just going to create a few, few branches on this little thing. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. And one thing you'll notice is I don't, I don't use any lines or templates because I find it really hard to follow them. And I'd much rather just let things evolve and I'll just think about what the shape of the tree might be and just create a very organic shape and let the stitches fall wherever they want rather than trying to figure out exactly where my needle needs to go every time. Just let it go where it wants as long as it's pretty close. I'm pretty good with that. And it creates very, very natural kind of organic looking botanicals so that don't look at, at all stiff and plastic like they came out of a mold somewhere. So let's see, I've got some thread left on this needle and I'm going to use it because I don't want to waste that thread and I don't need it for the next thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to use brown for the trunk of the tree. So I'm just going to, as I did in the last video, use it to do some more straight stitches here and there randomly on the green here and that starts to build up texture, visual interest, and builds the layers that create very dense and interesting composition. It looks pretty sparse to begin with but as you as I start to add more and more stitches things get more and more interesting. So now I'm going to move on to the trunk of my tree here and the trunk is just many many rows of stem stitch side by side and the way that trees grow the trunk is thicker at the bottom and then the branches are thinner as they get get up to the top let me show you i've already started doing some stem stitch you already know how stem stitch work where the trees branch out near the top where all the leaves are I'm going to just do one row of stem stitch and then further down on the trunk I'll do many many rows and I, I don't worry about trying to get my stitches right beside each other if there are gaps between the rows then I can go in and fill them in later on and actually I find if I fill in any gaps with a slightly different color of thread that adds a really interesting more visual interest and it makes it look more more artistic than just having a solid mass of the same color so I can add more stitches wherever I feel like I want them if I want more stitches near the bottom I can add them if I want to make fill in any of the gaps I can keep going and I'll just keep going and adding more and more rows of stitches filling in the blanks as I go filling in any gaps as I go until until my tree feels like it's got enough of a trunk on it. So that's it for the stem stitch. Now, one of the things that I noticed as I was working along on my, my piece is that with all the bulk that I've added onto the bottom of my, my scroll here, the top edge was getting kind of flimsy and and it was sort of starting to curl under so I started to to add some interest to the top edge off my off my scroll by adding some really close up leaves and these these leaves are definitely out of proportion with the other things in my composition here so I'm doing ba a back stitch all the way around the leaf shape. So it'll create a solid line all the way around. And then I can add some veins and things like that if I want, but I don't have to. So back stitch all the way around, holding, holding the little piece of green cloth there, just the way that I did 
and I showed I showed you how in the first video I showed you how I created the pine trees so I'm basically doing the same thing I don't use pins because I find them really fiddly I always end up getting my thread caught up in the pin and I just find it easier to hold to hold my my little these little bits of cloth in place with my finger but you can absolutely use a pin if you want so I'll just continue stitching and there you go I've got one leaf that's going to support the top edge of my piece of cloth it's functional it also adds another layer of depth to my piece so these leaves are decorative as well as functional they're giving bulk and stabilizing the top edge of my cloth but they're also adding an extra layer of depth to the composition another thing that i've been doing with this scroll is instead of working sequentially and finishing one section completely before moving on to the next section I bounce back and forth that allows me to to create more interest it creates more variety in thread colors rather than using all the same thread in this area because this I've used this thread somewhere else and then I've come back and used it here it creates much more variation than completely finishing this area and then going on to the next area and there you go I'm going to off camera add some more leaves here and so this section will get more development and I'll keep bouncing back and forth and in my next video I'm going to show you how I use one of my favorite stitches for creating leaves and flowers and that's called the chain stitch so I hope you'll come back and check that video out when it's ready to go. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you again soon.